My name is Dr. Donovan and today we're going to be covering the ESR blood test, short for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It's a simple test that helps to detect inflammation in the body. But what exactly does it measure and when might your doctor order it and what do the results potentially mean? Well, let's break it down. So the ESR test doesn't look for a specific disease. Instead, it measures how quickly red blood cells settle to the bottom of a tall, thin test tube over the course of one hour. Normally, these cells fall slowly, but when there's inflammation, proteins like fibrinogen cause the red cells to clump together and fall more quickly. Essentially, the faster they fall, the higher the ESR, which suggests more inflammation. So why might your doctor order this test? Well, your doctor might request an ESR if they suspect an inflammatory condition, especially if you've got symptoms like headaches, muscle pains in the neck, shoulders or hips, unexplained weight loss, anemia, which is a low red blood cell count, or joint stiffness. It's often used to help diagnose or monitor conditions such as temporal arteritis or polymyalgia rheumatica, where the ESR can be significantly raised. It may also be used to track how well a treatment is working over time. So how is the test done? Well, a blood sample is taken from a vein in your arm. There is no special preparation that is required beforehand. The blood is placed in a vertical tube and left for an hour to measure how far the red cells fall, leaving a column of clear plasma at the top. So what do the results mean? Well, a raised ESR usually points to inflammation, but it's not specific. That means it can't tell you where in the body the inflammation is or what's causing it. Now, common reasons for a raised ESR can include infections, autoimmune conditions, some cancers, anemia, kidney disease, older age, and pregnancy. Now, a very high ESR might indicate a more serious issue like a serious infection or an autoimmune disease. A low ESR is less common, but it can be seen in conditions like polycythemia or where someone has too many white blood cells and abnormal proteins in their blood. Medications can also affect your result. Drugs like steroids and aspirin may lower the ESR, while oral contraceptives, vitamin A, and certain anti-rheumatic medications might raise it. So let's talk about some of the potential limitations of the test. Well, because it's a non-specific test, ESR is rarely used in isolation. A normal result doesn't always rule out inflammation and a raised result doesn't confirm a diagnosis. That is why it's usually interpreted alongside a full clinical assessment and other tests. So speaking of other tests, what other tests might your doctor order? Well, depending on your symptoms, your doctor might also request CRP or C-reactive protein, this is another marker of inflammation that changes more quickly in the blood, a full blood count, rheumatoid factor or ANA for autoimmune diseases, blood cultures if infection is suspected, or serum protein electrophoresis for conditions like multiple myeloma or lymphoma. So to summarize, the ESR is a simple, inexpensive blood test that can help to detect inflammation. It's particularly helpful in certain conditions like temporal arteritis and polymyalgia rheumatica, and is also used to monitor treatment response over time. But because it's non-specific, it's just one piece of the puzzle and it always needs to be interpreted in context. Please do remember this video is intended as a general educational resource. It is not medical advice. Only your own doctor can interpret your test results in the context of your full medical history and symptoms. And I can't provide individual medical advice here for medico legal reasons. So if you've got any concerns about your ESR or any other blood test result, please do speak with your own healthcare provider. Thanks for watching and bye.